Let's take a look at some charts on Monero for Brave New Coin. So Monero has had continuous incremental upgrades over the past two years that have decreased transaction costs, improved transaction efficiency, improved privacy, improved custody. Monero is one of the only true privacy coins in that thus far the privacy has been unbreakable from a chain analysis perspective. That's not to say people are still trying. Uh, they announced in December 2020 Bulletproofs Plus, which is currently in the process of getting audited and approved for the upgrading process. But once again, it's cheaper, better, faster, stronger, privacy, security, transaction efficiency, that sort of thing. So Monero doesn't get a lot of press, uh, which is disappointing considering how fundamentally sound the project is in general. Um, it actually has less inflation in the blue line here. Inflation is lower than BTC at the moment, not by much. It's certainly lower than most altcoins across the board, lower than ETH, lower than anything you can think of. Monero doesn't have a set cap, instead it has a perpetual block reward. And it's getting super close to basically flatlining on the inflation as that end date approaches when all the I think it's like 18 million coins or something are mined. You can see the supply graphs here. Uh, Monero nearing an 18 million mark and BTC currently 18.6, obviously with a max cap of 21 million. So these coins are very closely related on a fundamental supply issuance type scale, probably more so than anything else, maybe barring LTC. LTC obviously is a fork of BTC, so it mirrors and mimics. BTC's supply and issuance fundamentals, but in the moment, Monero and BTC are probably the closest analogs to each other from a supply and issuance perspective. You know, even LTC has 4% something inflation at the moment. If we look at Monero hash rate and difficulty, they changed their consensus algorithm to random X late last year, actually, sorry, late 2019. Yeah, it feels like yesterday. Um, they changed their algorithm in November 2019 to random X. So although hash rate looks like it's busting through all-time highs, you can't really view anything pre-November 2019 and compare it to post-2019 November. So even still, hash rate's still increasing. Um, it's increasing week over week. It's not spiking and dropping like it did previously. This is probably cloud mining type stuff. Uh, so overall, the, the security of the network continues to increase because of the hash rate and difficulty. If you want to view it in that lens, you certainly can. So it's good to see that even with the new algorithm, narrow mining still continues. It, the new algorithm favors CPUs over GPUs and ASICs, so maybe that's part of the outlook there. If you look at transactions per day in the fill here, transactions per day are basically an all-time high. If we zoom way out, you can see kind of where Monero sat. And over the past year and a couple months, just the explosion of transactions. A lot of this is probably re mining related. You know, it's related to that random X switchover. And much of this is likely mining payouts or mining related payouts. But nevertheless, it's still transactions, a transaction regardless. Um, fees are very low relative to where they were pre Bulletproofs 1.0. You know, everything sort of exploded in a scaling crisis throughout 2017 and 2018. Uh, they got bulletproofs in October 2018, and basically fees went way down by multiple factors here and are currently sitting at basically a nickel, which is nothing relative to BTC. Even if we look at BTC fees, BTC um, average transaction fees are 20 bucks versus Monero's nickel, right? So there are definitely differences here as far as usage is concerned. We can look at uh, block size as well. And overall, BTC's block size is much greater than Monero, which is why fees are likely much higher. It's, it's only a fixed amount of real estate. So you can see Monero's block size is all the way down here. If Monero's block size was equivalent to BTC, fees would likely be much higher. But these are things you can, you can compare directly, I think, because they're so related. To one another. You can compare Monero to privacy coins, other privacy enabling coins, even though most of them aren't really equivalent to Monero in that respect. 
you know, Decred, Dash, Zcash, that sort of thing. You can compare those, but it doesn't really make that much sense because they're so much different from one another. So overall for Monero, things look great from multiple perspectives. Block size is still increasing. You can see how block size decreased with bulletproofs. There was a fundamental shift in the size of transactions there. And it's creeping up once again. But they've continued to tweak scaling, tweak consensus, tweak a bunch of stuff just slowly, incrementally over time, kind of before it becomes a problem. Now, maybe the, the GPU ASIC issue was an issue big enough to get them to switch their algorithm, which was great. You know, this was like a crisis that needed solving immediately, uh, whereas they're sort of ahead of the scaling game continuously. If we look at the Google Trends for Monero over the past five years worldwide, Google Trends are certainly creeping up over the past two, three years, but have not exceeded sort of a local highs of 2017, local highs of 2018. And as price begins to creep up, I would watch this as a leading indicator for people getting into the coin. Now, Monero is difficult to actually get into for most people because you can't really buy it most places. For Americans, it's kind of limited to Kraken. Uh, globally, depending on where your country is located, the regulations are all over the place. Uh, some places you can buy it, unlike Bittrex or wherever. But um, for the most part, of all the coins in existence, Monero is one of the least traded across the board because of the regulatory aspects and the regulatory concerns relating to the ironclad privacy of Monero. So that is likely a limiting factor in, you know, it's not listed on Robinhood, for instance. Um, what was interesting is Grayscale announced that they're exploring a Monero trust. And um, the uh, Monero people and the Grayscale people don't really get along, so I'm interested to see how they're going to react to uh, the Monero trust. You know, do you want number go up price-wise, or do you want to not be associated with uh, Grayscale, Barry Silver, that type thing? Obviously, privacy concerns. Obviously, it breaks the privacy of Monero. Um, something else to consider and look out for is uh, wrapped Monero, which we've been narrow on ETH. Again, this probably breaks the privacy of Monero, but it allows it to be traded on DEXs, which opens it up to all sorts of avenues for new participants to get in. And I believe Wrapped Monero is already a thing. It's just not widely available everywhere. Looking at technicals, we have 5,200 EMAs, yearly pivots, VPVR, volume, RSI, and Bitfinex long short open interest. So starting with that, uh, open interest is currently net short on Monero for the first time in... Pff, a long time, probably since 2018. It's, it's net short, not by much, but it is definitely net short up here, um, which means this could this could could squeeze the shorts, allowing price to slingshot higher. I wouldn't generally count on that because it were it would require a much higher high here in order for these shorts to feel any pain. It looks like most of them opened around the uh, 200 to 250 level. So prices would basically have to hit all-time highs for these shorts to probably feel any pain. If we're looking at uh, trend, trend looks fine. It's looked fine since mid-2018. The 50 and the 200 continue to support price. We're still above both. We're above all this VPVR congestion at 50, at 100, at 150. There's support at 180. There's support at the yearly pivot just below the current price, somewhere around 200. So there's lots of micro supports and reasons why price shouldn't dump to sub 150. Uh, but if it does, then you're looking at big supports at 100, 120, based on pivots, based on VPVR. I like the cadence at which this this uh, trend has moved up. It's just slow and steady. Um, no bullet bear divs here. Just continues to grind up. Uh, a little bit of resistance on the way up here, volume-wise, but nothing... You know, path of least resistance is up based on VPVR. There's been more volume below price than above price at this point. And end of year, if things get crazy, you know, you could see a, an all-time high retest on Monero, which would be somewhere around 450, 500, something in, in there based on the uh, R5 yearly pivot. If we look at this uh, pitchfork for Monero, three points, you get a rate of change. It's saying, it's telling you, it's telling us collectively that the top side of this is the danger zone for overbought territory and price will continuously want to return to this median line. So if you're not bullish BTC or crypto in general, you know, you're looking for a retest of this median line somewhere here around 150, 160 towards the end of the year. And that sort of matches the VPVR zone, 
the 200 day moving average. So again, there's tons of reasons why, like most things in crypto right now, a 50% drop would be a massive buy, buy the dip opportunity uh, based on what I'm seeing based on technicals. If you're looking for just classic support resistance type stuff, here's Monero on the daily cloud. It's continued to climb and climb and climb, just kind of textbook Kumo breakout, TK recross above the cloud, cloud test, TK recross above the cloud, cloud test, TK recross above the cloud, cloud test, TK recross above the cloud. So it's printing this over and over and over again. It's suggesting a setup for another cloud test here. And realistically, the long entry signal isn't until you get this TK recross above the cloud. And it might be a little late on some of these entries, um, but for me, it's the biggest confidence factor that I'm looking for if I'm looking for bullish continuation. In a perfect world, these settings just reset entirely and we get a red cloud here and everything goes bearish in the interim because then the entry is super clean, right? Everything's above the cloud and it's just a no-brainer. When we go from bearish to bullish, we turn that light switch back on. Right now the lights are dimming. They're not they're not bearish. They're more neutral than, bull than bullish because we're just sideways here. Uh, even though we're above the cloud or above the 200, you know, everything that you're going to look at in a textbook is going to tell you, okay, this trend is bullish. But from experience, especially based on where this has gone since uh, mid-2020 and how it's gotten here, it's probably going to want to retest this cloud at 200. So 200 looks like a good buy to me. 150 looks like a good buy to me. Any lower low looks like a good buy to me. Um, especially if you're expecting all-time high retests within the next 8 to 12 months. XMR BTC, on the other hand, uh, looks about as bearish as bearish can get. It is hanging on by a thread at support here. Pretty big yearly pivot um, and tons of volume, historic volume on the on the downside here. Bit of a gap here on the way up. You know, this could could big if gap up to the 200-day moving average around 007. Um, not really any support or resistance at 0055. It's doing a whole lot of nothing down here at 004. So certainly your risk reward potential is high because if this breaks down, it wants to go to 002. If this breaks up, it wants to go to 007 and potentially 01. I mean, that's the ultimate target for any longs down here in my mind. But you are you are fighting the trend hard if you're assuming it's going to go to 01 from here. You know, if you're if you're all in <laughs> all in uh that's contra trend, it's a big risk. You could say, "All right, I'm looking for mean reversion here, but man, this is it just doesn't look pretty on a trend here. You can see that since 2018, it's really struggled, you know, back to the fundamentals of, at the beginning, like I was talking about inflation and how good this looks versus everything else. Fundamentally, technicals just do not favor uh, along here for Monero BTC. So overall, macro and micro improvements for Monero since the beginning of time. It has an active dev community as a passionate user base. Hash rate's increasing, security's getting better. Google Trends, mediocre but looking up. Transactions near all-time highs, hash rate all-time highs. Technicals look good for trend continuation, so long as everything else stays bullish. Um, and Monero BTC, again, just doesn't look like anything I want to touch in the near term. And if you want to check out how I'm trading ETH or BTC, you can pop on over to enzyme.finance. There will be a link in the description below. You can see how I trade uh, ETH and BTC and the trades I make and win and for how much, that sort of thing. Currently 1.38 AUM. Let me know what you think about Monero in the comments below. Is it undervalued? Is it overvalued? Do people care? Is it not traded widely enough? Stuff like that. I'm curious to know people's opinions because for me it's one of the, one, really one of the best projects available. Um, it's just not really widely available trade-wise.